think works out really well. This is better speech and hearing month, and I'm glad that you guys can come and hear us and talk to us about what we've been doing here at Unitron for 54 years, Galen? Something, Something like that. I think 52. 52. We've been, we've been in the Kitchener Waterloo area since 1964-ish. Um, I'm a senior project manager, or a senior project manager here at Unitron. Um, we're part of Sonova. Sonova is the largest hearing health care provider in the world. Um, Sonova not only puts together things like hearing aids, but we also do things like this hearing assist system uh, that work in schools and work for institutions that allow them to hear, uh, to, for people with hearing disabilities or hearing um, challenges to actually participate better in their life and in society. Um, over the next little while, you're going to see our branding change. It's going to go, it's going to be branded, we're going to be changing from Unitron as our flagship name on buildings and so forth over to Sonova. And that's just to show that we're now part of that large group that includes multiple companies, uh, Phonak, AV, which are, are uh, advanced bionics for hearing aids, the Roger system, which you see here. So that's part of what we do. Connect Hearing and Audio Nova in Europe are also uh, part of the Sonova group. Um, yeah, so that's where we got with that. Um, I've been working in electronics and software for around a quarter of a century now. Um, and it seems every time I go to work for a new company or I go with a new talent, the products get smaller and smaller. Um, before being here at Unitron, I was at BlackBerry doing BlackBerry devices. Before BlackBerry, I was at a company called Sign doing handheld computers. So everything keeps getting smaller and smaller. But each time, the computing power actually is getting is staying about the same as we get that much smaller. Um, at Unitron, I get to use these skills to work on products that directly impact people's lives, make people's lives better. Devices that can make a real difference, not in just the life of the person wearing the hearing aid, but in the life of their entire family, friends and family. Hearing loss, in many cases, takes a long time. You start to slowly lose your hearing. You stop hearing the S's and the H's in people's uh, in the words, and you start missing words here and there. Um, at first, it's the higher frequencies, and as the loss progresses, people start to hear less and less. It can take them even longer to realize that they need to get help. So they've lost their hearing, and then they actually, a lot of times, need to get pushed into being able to uh, go and get their hearing checked and go to get hearing aids. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a little while later. But imagine what would happen if we waited that long for corrective vision or for help with an appendicitis. Hearing loss can be the same thing. We want to make sure that as people start to um, <clears throat> insulate themselves into the world, that they actually, or that they start to see themselves being insulated in the world, that they actually start to, uh, or can get help and be part of the world again. So, Research has been done, and it continues to be done, that shows that hearing loss um, isolates people, and I've mentioned that. But when people start to become more and more isolated, it's showing that more and more that uh, dementia can be a cause of that isolation. So if people can hear better and actually can start to uh, be part of their environment even more, that um, the cost to healthcare and, and uh, for helping people with dementia and things like that can actually be reduced. If we can avoid isolation simply by improving someone's hearing, imagine how much better their life is going to be. Um, I remember back in school that when you wore glasses, you were made fun of. You were called four eyes, or you had your glasses stolen and they were broken. Uh, sorry, I hope this doesn't bring back bad memories for anybody. Um, today, people are knocking the lenses out of their glasses and wearing them as a fashion statement. How do we do that for hearing aids? Do we promote bionic hearing? Do we give them to a bunch of hipsters and say, this is the next coolest thing and, and make a fashion statement? I don't know. There seems to be some stigma about wearing hearing aids. People are worried to be seen as having a disability. The stigma has disappeared from wearing glasses. Can we make it disappear for hearing aids? Let's see what people say are some of the stigmas. They're big and clunky. This is huge. But this is ancient, and it's a fake model. Um, but they did used to be huge. This is a USAID, one of the best-selling products for Unitron that we've ever had. And someone told me today that if they had a 
where it's full of these, they could retire because they're still so popular in the market, especially for musicians. Um, you know, <clears throat> sorry. These big clunky things, I never, I only ever noticed the big clunky ones, the ones that stuck out of your ear. These ones were fit specifically to fit me. They'll, they will not fit anyone else in this room. The uh, advances in hearing technology have gone so far that now you can just get them about this size, the size of a jelly bean. And you see that back there, Chris? This is Moxie now. This is the, this was the world's smallest hearing on your hearing aid. And I think it might still be, I'm not 100% sure. But it's one of the ones that we use. Now imagine talking this behind your ear. No one's going to see it. And maybe that's the problem. The only ones people see are the big, funky ones. They don't see the really sexy-looking little ones. Sorry, Sarah. 